So one year ago, I made a Let's Fix an Xbox video. And in that video, I talked about some junk PS3s I wanted to go through. And now is the time to go through them. I know one of these, oops. One of these just needs a new laser, which has already been supplied. Thank you very much. One needs a hard drive. Anyways, I'm kind of excited that this one still has the warranty sticker. I think maybe one of the other ones do. So I gotta go through these and see which ones, um, which one needs a laser, and the other two probably have the yellow light of death. So I'm gonna see what is what. First one I'm gonna look at is a little bit concerning. Um, see if I can get that on camera. It looks like there's been some kind of fluids or liquids that have been in contact with it. This one it has the warranty tag, which is great, but. Hopefully we are not dealing with uh, a bunch of liquid damage. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in. Shouldn't need, shouldn't need the HDMI cable just to see if it'll boot up. Wow. It didn't do the double beep. Um, usually when they have the yellow light of death, death they'll uh, beep beep twice when you power them up. That one's actually turning on. I think I'm gonna get an HDMI cable on it and see if it has image. Huh. Well, I'll be. Cannot start the appropriate sort of thing. Is the hard drive missing? Well, look at that though. We actually have video, we have life. I did not expect that one to work. Uh, maybe this is the one that needs the laser. Um, let me get the hard drive situation uh, sorted out here. So this is a CH, no, I'm sorry, CECH L01 model, which came with the 80 gig. It is not the fully backwards compatible, not the hardware backwards compatible. I'm gonna have to dusty in there, but uh, it might do. Uh, what software emulation on the ps2 stuff i think some of these fats um uh, is this the right hard drive tray i do not have the right hard drive tray i have the right 80 gig hard drive but uh i'll have to find the right little caddy be right back all of my old ps3 hard drives have the same caddy holder not the right style for this um, I am just going to, uh, take the caddy off and shove the hard drive in there and see what happens. I've never mixed and matched PS3 hard drives. Well, the data is still on it from the old hard drive, so I don't know if there's going to be conflicts, but, uh, find out. Hopefully worst case scenario is it can just format and be happy there. It's in the socket. It's just kind of loosey-goosey. I put the tape on there so I can easily pull it back out. This is just for testing, so temporary. Plug it back in and see if it does anything. Man, that fan is noisy. It's got a bit of a growl to it. All right. Hopefully we get something on the screen up here. Eventually. There we go. Ooh, connect the controller. Uh, okay. Okay, connect the controller. Feel bad sticking that in such a dirty port it's covered in dust in there i'll i'll do the cleaning later but this is let's just see if this will do anything got a random controller that does connect um okay so i will have to uh go through the reformatting process on this before i can go any further it's asking for version 4.84 which came out in 2019 so this ps3 must have been updated just like a year before i got my hands on it it's formatting. You excited, Kitty? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, I got the hard drive sorted out. And now, um, 
This is probably the one with a bad drive. Let's find out. Get in there. Um, wow. Huh, this one just keeps on surprising me. It's actually reading the disc just fine. Um, jeez, I thought for sure this was going to have all kinds of liquid damage on the inside and be junk, but uh, so far so good. So far it's having no trouble reading that PS3 disc, which is great. This is one that still has the unbroken warranty seal, which makes me happy because that means, you know, the 14-year-old kid wasn't in there with the heat gun nuking the... Uh, graphics chip put a couple of foam pads in the hard drive just to keep it from bouncing around in there since it doesn't have the right caddy not fits nice and firm cleaned off all the mystery fluid and it cleaned up nicely i did blow it out with compressed air um i'm sure some people are in the comments are gonna be saying hey you should really put some new thermal paste on there yeah i know I'm just not ready to break this seal yet. Um, I'm gonna run it for a while and see if the fan ramps up. If it seems like it's running hot, then yeah, I'll thermal paste it. But otherwise, I'm gonna leave it as is. Well, I ran through a map and the fan is staying pretty reasonable, so I'm gonna leave it as is. Um, it looks like all this one needed was a hard drive. Seems strange to me, someone would just take the hard drive out, but I'm sure there's reasons. Anyways, this one's done. Now onto the next one. Okay, next one is one that's also missing the hard drive. Um, got it powered on. I think that should be on. Okay, we got the red light. And oh, there we go. It's the famous yellow light of death. Double beep. I really don't know why they call it yellow light when it's flashing red. Anyways, this is the typical problem that these guys have. That I've seen lots of. Uh, about a year or two years ago, someone discovered that it's actually not the GPU BGA balls that are the problem. It's the capacitors under, which I did order some. So uh, fingers crossed that that takes care of this one. Uh, this is the one I think I'm going to keep for myself because it's the old original backwards compatible model. So uh, that'll be cool. And with this one too. I'm also very happy to see that the warranty seal is still intact. Uh, that's a good sign that nobody's in there to uh, try to reflow it. And now to take it apart. All right, so this is the GPU and these are the capacitors I'm going to swap out. Since there's quite a bit of thermal mass in these boards, I'm going to be using the preheater, nothing crazy, just around 150, 60 degrees, uh, just to make it so I have to fight this less. Uh, I'm just kind of getting everything warmed up, bringing it up to temp uh, at a moderate rate, and hopefully I won't have to fight these guys too hard. There's just a lot of copper around those, so it just soaks up the heat. So as expected, it did take a lot of heat, but here are the pads. I was able to get all of the old capacitors off, even the little leads that broke off. And that's a little mess of old capacitors that I'm left with. Seems to be the easiest way to get them off is to just chop them up, get them off piece at a time. So the new capacitors 
are uh, 470 microfarad tantalums. Um, I'll give you the part number, although I ordered these like a year ago, so they might not have these in stock anymore. This is from Mouser. Um, so yeah, since these are 470 and one of these old ones are 1200 each, so about three of these will replace um, one of the old ones. All right, so here are the new capacitors. Get a view on those terminal ends there and there. It is making a good solid connection. I checked each one to make sure both sides were anchored. Positives uh, go to the outside, of course, and since I'm leaving the uh, other capacitors on the other side, they have the internal jumper that's needed to jumper the positives together. That's why I'm not adding a jumper wire. Um, anyways, I'm just gonna check this real quick to make sure I didn't cause a short with one of these leads uh, touching both positive and negative. Um, I was getting 1.7 ohms um, without the capacitor, so I should be somewhere in the ballpark of that. Yeah, 1.6, that's good, no short there. And then there should be no short on the top either. Yeah, good, no shorts, so it's safe to power up. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna uh, put this together enough to test it and hope that it will actually boot up this time without doing the double beep yellow light of death business um and if it does boot up i think i'm going to go ahead and replace the cpu capacitors too since they are the same brand same model at the same age if these failed these probably fail will fail soon too so i might just go ahead and replace those well i have everything hooked up except uh hdmi and a hard drive and the sd card reader hopefully it won't Need any of that just to boot up? I don't think so. I just basically just want to make sure it makes it a few seconds in before it double beeps. Um, and if we get a green light, great. So we got the red light. It's got the standby. I'm at the power and hope that it works. It's staying green. Holy crap, it's booting up. That's all I needed was those caps. Here's the eject. Ooh, that don't sound good. There's something in there. Got a little... Oh, yep. That's got a screwed up drive. I'll take that apart. But, uh, hey, it's booting up. That's wonderful. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and replace those CPU caps. I got a free copy of something. Let's see what I got. Harry Potter... Oh, Colburn's? That's actually Albertville. Oh, it's not too far from here. Look at that. Someone lost their uh, rental DVD in their Yellow Light of Death PS3. There are some cracks I noticed around here. That's a little strange. Right around the hub there. Looks like the data part's okay, so it'll probably still work. Yeah. You know, Colburn's doesn't even have DVDs anymore. They uh, closed up that rental part of their store. Disc one, maybe I'm missing disc two.
Kid A, you need to get out of the way. Gave this one a wipe down. Came out looking good too. I repurposed an old 500 gigabyte uh, laptop drive I had laying around, so that's in there now. It should work good for the PS3. Kitty, you are annoying. Since this is the backwards compatible model, it's going to be finding a uh, permanent home here with me. Right in my entertainment center. Not sure why the drive was uh, acting funny earlier with the uh, grindy noises. I just took it apart, took out the disc, and put it back together, and it seems to be working fine. So I guess I got lucky on that one. Hi again. And it should pop up with PS2. All right, we're good. Now for the third and final unit. Oh, this one has the broken warranty seal. I'll check to see if it actually has a hard drive in there. Um, a little dirty, definitely used well for a few years, a little bit of something rattling around in there. I hope it isn't conductive. Anyways, I'm gonna see if this one will boot up or if it's another yellow light of death unit. Okay, I have a red light and power. Okay, this one might actually boot up. See the hard drive light blinking, so uh, looks like it's time to hook up an HDMI to this thing and see if maybe this is the unit that has the bad laser. Let's see if this one has a video. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so it's hard drive and everything is intact and good. Um, I'm just going to insert the PS3 disc. See how far it gets. Well, so far it's working. All right, I guess I'll sync up a controller and make sure that works. Well, so far I didn't have any trouble getting a controller to sync. Uh, PS3 game worked fine, and now I have a DVD in there. It's reading that fine, so I don't think there's any issues with the drive, but the fan is blowing pretty hard for just running a DVD, so there might be something going on with the thermal paste. Um, so I think at this point, I'm just going to tear it down, clean it out, put on some new paste, and see if that uh, quiets the fan down. All right, let's see what that thermal paste looks like. Oh, actually doesn't look bad. Still, yeah, it's still kind of... Well, okay, I guess that's not as moist. This one over the side over here, guys, a little bit of sticky tackiness to it. Yeah, but that's pretty, pretty dry. I think a smoker must have owned 
this PS3, because even after blowing it out with compressed air, it's still a little slimy in there. Now, I'm not going to do anything about these caps quite yet. Um, I'm going to go with, if it ain't broke, don't fix it right now. I'll run it for a while, see if this thing has issues. If it does have issues, I'll go ahead and replace them. But for now, they're going to stay. I'm just going to try out the new thermal paste. So cleaning out the heat sink and adding new thermal paste just made a slight difference. It just made it a little bit longer before ramping up in speed. But that fan is still trying to take off. It's trying to fly off of my desk. And all I'm doing is playing a DVD. So I think I'm going to have to delid this. I'm going to have to uh, pull off the heat spreader and get to that other layer of thermal paste and replace that. Let's see how well that thermal paste spread. Sure is sticky. Yeah, that did a pretty good job. I think I got maybe a little bare on the corner here, but uh, that doesn't look like the cause of the problem. So here I have delidded both the CPU and GPU. I've already put the top lids back on the heatsink. This is a very nerve-wracking but necessary procedure, uh, especially under the CPU. The thermal paste under the lid was just dried up non-existent so that would explain why it was getting hot even though the thermal paste on top of the lid was fresh and new uh, the thermal paste under the lid is where the problem was at so now it should be back to uh, whisper quiet and I did have a goof while I was delitting the CPU I had to make my own tool to get under there and cut the glue but I did nick four traces of which I'll have a close-up here I was able to patch that back up and uh, this should be good to go now to reassemble. So far I'm 15 minutes into the movie. And the fan is just down low. You can barely hear it. In fact, the DVD drive is about as loud as the fan. So that was the problem. It did needed thermal compound just under the lid. I think I'm going to reassemble it uh, and actually launch a game. The game, of course, is going to use more of the GPU. So let's try that. I've been gaming for a good 30, 40 minutes. Still nice and quiet. It's working great. And I noticed the heat that is coming out of it is actually warm whereas uh, before with the old thermal paste uh, it was blowing harder but coming out just room temperature so now it's actually working it's actually pulling the heat out of the chip which is great so just to recap ps3 number one still has the warranty seal intact this one just needed a hard drive I got lucky on that one number two the backwards compatible beast this needed the uh, capacitors replaced. It had the yellow light of death. And number three needed to be delitted or the heat spreader removed. And I am betting, speaking of the capacitors, I bet there has been a lot of PS3s that were sacrificed to hot gunning and hot airing uh, unnecessarily to the GPU and cell processor. Uh, so if you see you have if you have a PS3 and you find yourself having to reflow it multiple times because it only lasts a little while, well you probably just need those capacitors replaced. Um, I would use reflowing as a worst case last resort option. If I were to ever get a yellow light of death PS3 again, I would immediately just change out those caps and and not even think about reflowing it unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, I think that wraps up this video. Uh, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.